Hello friends, I'm Daisy Victoria and today we're going to do a pretty quick video to show how I make lacing cords for my medieval dresses. I happen to be in need of a lacing cord for this dress which I am currently working on so I made one. This is going to be finger loop braided cord which is a historical technique. I'll be using this size 10 crochet thread to create my finger loop cord. The technique I'm using is actually found in textiles and clothing 1150 to 1450. This is a Museum of London publication, very nice book. This book talks about finger loop braids and it actually gives you a technique to follow based on some of the extant finds, and that's the technique I will be using for this braid. This is a five strand braid, so the first thing we need to do is actually create five strands. Now you want to anchor this to something that you can actually work from and provide tension. I'm going to try using my dress form stand this time. I usually put it around the leg of a table or a chair, but I'm just going to see how this works. Now that I've created my five strands, I'm just going to cut the thread off and tie it. Next, I want to make sure that the strands are all nice and equal in length. And I'm going to pull these so that the knot is actually down by the end over there. So here's where we're going to start with the technique. To begin this braiding style, you're going to want to have three strands on one hand and two on the other. It doesn't matter which hand has three and which hand has two because we're going to be switching them all the way down. Now to begin the first pass, you're going to stick your index finger through that first thread and grab the one that's on your ring finger of the other hand and then you're going to pull that tight down at the bottom. Then you're going to walk these two threads onto your ring and middle fingers. Take your index finger, come through and grab the thread that's on your other ring finger and pull it tight and then you're just going to keep doing that. Walk these two through grab the other one, pull it tight, walk those two through, grab the other one, pull it tight, and so on. In period images, sometimes you actually see two people working on a cord. One person will be used down there where the braid is forming to tighten it. That can be especially helpful if you have a really long cord. I'm doing this one about as long as I can manage it on my own. Sometimes to get a little bit more attention on my own and to make a longer cord, I'll actually do this on the end of a chair and I will use my foot as a tension rod and uh, provide the tension that way as I'm going while it's still very long. The shorter your cord, the easier it is, of course, to get tension when you first begin. And eventually you'll reach a point at which it's no longer really that difficult to pull the tension. It'll just kind of easily go with each pass. Eventually you'll get to a point where it's very natural to pull tension as you pull your arms apart and that's where the cord gets a little bit easier. So if you're making a very short cord then that's actually all you'll have to deal with. You may notice up here I'm not actually walking my fingers through and then putting my finger back through. What I've found is sort of like a natural quick way to do this is to simply put my finger in there and go ahead and 
pull the other thread through before I even let the finger go off of that one. So as you get a little bit quicker with this, if you find that that's a more natural way, then please go ahead and do it. As you get to the end, it'll become a little bit more challenging. See, I just dropped one there. And that's because you're getting so very close between the work and the fingers. So eventually you'll come to a point where you kind of notice that it's time to stop. And whenever you get to that point, you can actually just stop your braiding and you've got a cord. To remove your cord, if you've wrapped it around the leg of a table or something, you can go ahead and just lift it off. I can unscrew this part of the mannequin and lift it off too. Um, to me, this doesn't really make too much of a difference, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. And I have my cord. Now that we have our cord, we need to lace the dress. I'm going to use this plastic yarn needle for the lacing. And I'm just going to take the end of my cord, which has the loops from my finger loop braid, and I'm just going to pass it through the eye of the needle, like so. Now I'm going to come over to my dress and start lacing. So I'm just going to find the bottom here, and I'm going to push that plastic yarn needle through the eyelet hole I made. I like to tie it together at the end so it doesn't go anywhere. And then I'm just going to start lacing the dress. So this is spiral lacing. I'm going to go over on one side and then back up under on the other side. I know there's a lot of black in this project and that's actually on purpose because in the image that I based it on you can't see the lacing at all. So just bear with me on this one. I'm going to go ahead and remove my placket so you can see a little bit better here at the top. And then once I have the lacing through all the holes and it's pulled tight, I can remove that plastic needle. And then I'm just going to tie my lacing cord around itself and stick any excess cord down inside the dress for wearing. So this method can be used for lots of medieval dresses. It's really nice. I like how fast it is to make the finger loop cord once you kind of get the hang of it. If you guys found this really inspirational and you decide to make your own finger loop lacing cord, please feel free to tag me. I would love to see it. Good luck on all of your projects and everything else you are doing, and I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.